Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. And today I wanted to show you how to easily install Emulation Station on your Raspberry Pi. This will work with the Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, or Raspberry Pi 0. This is a RetroPie alternative named Recall Box. First thing you're going to need to do is have your SD card inserted into your PC. Mine is Drive E, and I'm just going to format it. And I'm formatting at a FAT32. Quick format is fine. If you've already formatted it, that's okay. You can just go ahead and skip this part. Now that your SD card is ready, we're going to need to go to your favorite browser and go to www.recallbox.com. We're going to go right over here to DIY, DIY Recall Box. Scroll down a little bit. And it's time to download and install Recallbox OS. Go to this link, which is github.com slash digital lumberjack slash recallbox OS slash releases. It comes as a zipped folder. So we're just going to download this. Now I've already downloaded it and I've placed it in a folder on my desktop named Recallbox. We just need to extract the recall box OS. So right click, extract. You can use WinZip, 7-Zip, anything you feel like you need to unzip with. We're going to open up that unzipped recall box folder. And inside, we have a bunch of files. All we need to do, I'm going to snap this over here. And I'm going to open up my SD card in another window. And I'll snap it to this side. All you need to do is copy everything from the Recallbox OS unzipped folder that you just created. Copy it to your SD card. Now when this is done copying, we can go take the SD card from the computer, place it in a Raspberry Pi, and boot it up. We're now done with the transfer, so we're just going to put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi and start it up. I'll show you how to load ROMs and load BIOSes, so stay tuned. This part here is all automatic. After this is done, it will reboot and we'll be ready to get into Emulation Station. So I'm just going to fast forward this for you. Okay, so after it finishes installing, you come to the main screen here, and it will ask you to set up your controller. I'm using a wired Xbox 360 controller. It's an off-brand rock candy controller. I've been using it for years, and it works great for me. This is pretty much self-explanatory. It has detected my gamepad. I'm going to hold the A button, and it will walk me through setting up the control. And my hotkey is going to be my center Xbox button. Alright, so after you're done setting up your controller, you're brought to the emulation station front end. And as we scroll through here, we can see we have a few emulators pre-installed and a few games. Now most of these games are homebrew games or remakes. There are a few good games in here that you can play and have some fun with, but we really want to load some ROMs on here. And we'll show you how to do that in just a second. But one of the great things about Recall Box is if you press start on your controller, you can launch Kodi Media Center straight from the emulation station front end. It's built in. It works great. The controller works awesome in the menus. And this is something that RetroPie doesn't have implemented yet. So Kodi Media Center is already on recall box. It's already preloaded. You don't have to do any other setup. You just start Kodi Media Center. You can play from your USB or network storage. So let's get into transferring ROMs. Now, 
Recall Box does not support USB ROM transfer. We have to do it over network. So we're going to need to go back to the PC. But before we do that, you need to note a few things. The Raspberry Pi needs to be connected to the same network as the computer you are transferring ROMs from. So they both need to be on the same exact network. And before we do that, go ahead and press start on your controller. Scroll down to network settings. And just take note of your IP address and your host name. So write yours down and remember your host name. If we cannot connect with just the host name, we're going to need the IP address to connect. This is super simple and I'm going to move on right now back to the computer and we'll transfer some ROMs onto the recall box. The time has come to load some ROMs on our Raspberry Pi running recall box. Now there are several different methods in doing this. I will show you two methods. Um, two methods that I use. Now you can use third-party applications, but I use everything that's built into Windows as long as the Raspberry Pi and the computer are on the same network. I've placed my ROMs and a PlayStation 1 BIOS that I want to install in a folder on my desktop named ROMs. We're going to open up a file explorer. We're going to look over here under network. And here's my recall box. It has already detected my recall box. If it does not detect your recall box, you can go to the top search bar and type in backslash, backslash, all capital, recall box, and it should access your user data. And this is what is on the SD card for recall box. You have your BIOS, cheats, Cody, Lost and found music, ROM, save, screenshot systems. Your BIOSes will be loaded into the BIOS folder. Your ROMs will be loaded into the corresponding emulator. So if I want to install N64 games, I'll open up ROMs, go to my N64 folder, and I will put my ROMs into the N64 folder here. Same goes with Neo Geo, NES, all of these. If you still can't access your recall box from typing in the backslash backslash recall box, we can access it using the IP address that I told you guys to keep a note of. Take note of that IP address. So my, it is under your settings in your recall box. Mine was backslash backslash 192-168-10 dash one five eight I'm going to press enter and we are back inside of the recall box now I will show you one last way to do this which is my favorite way it's using a browser now when I'm using my Windows machine I use Chrome I'm gonna open Chrome and then the search bar up top type in your IP address one nine two dash one six eight dash 10 dash 158 your IP address will be different from mine so take note of it enter now we are inside of the recall box through the browser and this is an awesome graphical system here you can monitor your system resources so while you're playing games you can monitor what your CPU is doing, memory you have free how much space you have left on your SD card how hot your CPU is getting but from within this we can also load our BIOSes and our ROMs so if we go to our ROMs here you can see that we have all of the emulators listed I'm just gonna slide this over here and I'm gonna open up my ROMs folder that I have my ROM stored in and I'm just gonna do some SNES so I'll highlight these. I'll open the Super Nintendo. And I'll just drag them over. Now they are installed on the recall box. Same thing with BIOS. I want to install my PlayStation BIOS. I'm just going to drag it over here. Now the only thing I have noticed with this is if you have a file that is more than 100 megabytes, like a PlayStation 1 game, it will not transfer 
through the browser setup. You will have to use your file explorer method that I showed you. In my recall box here, snap this, open up my ROMs. I'm just going to go to my ROMs. This is inside of the recall box. PlayStation 1, which is PSX. And I'm going to load Bloody Roar into my recall box. Now this will take a second because it's a big file. It's almost 550 megabytes. Okay, my PlayStation 1 ROM is loaded and I will load N64. So I'll go back. Now this is the recall box down to N64 and we'll just copy and paste them. Now you can do this the browser method also for the smaller ROMs. Anything under 100 megabytes will work in the browser method I showed you. Okay, so now we have a PlayStation BIOS, N64 games, SNES games, and a PlayStation 1 game loaded onto the RetroPie. We're going to go to the RetroPie now, and I will demonstrate how they run. So we've loaded ROMs, and you're scrolling through, and you don't see the N64 logo or the PlayStation logo that we just loaded ROMs for. That's because we need to reboot one time. You can do that by hitting start, scroll down to quit, restart system. So after it's rebooted, we should see an N64 logo when we're scrolling through here and the PlayStation 1 logo. There's our N64. As you can see the games we just loaded. And here's our PlayStation. All right, I will demonstrate some PlayStation running here. You're done if you don't want to hang around for this. That's all right. I appreciate you guys watching. If this helped you out at all, if you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And thanks for watching.